How to stop being a people pleaser. Really, the way that you stop being a people pleaser is you stop putting their needs before yours. Because really, that's all that being a people pleaser is, is when you're putting somebody else's needs ahead of your own. Okay, and the reason why people become people pleasers, from what I've found, is the overwhelming majority of people I've met who are people pleasers have come from upbringings where their parents were controlling. They had what you call helicopter parents, right? And controlling parents, man, it's like, it's, they mean to do well, they want to protect you, they want to see you do well, but in their quest to accomplish that, uh, they create a lot of lifelong psychological effects in their children's heads. And then you see them play out as adults. And for the point of this example, for this coaching video, they become people pleasers, right? Where you're constantly trying to please other people and you're pushing aside your own needs, your own wants to keep everyone else happy. Do you feel me? And don't get me wrong, there's a healthy balance with people pleasing, okay? It's not like you can 24 seven be this like self-centered douchebag where it's all about you, right? I mean, obviously there's some give and take there, okay? You have to have a healthy balance as with everything in life, you know, and especially with people pleasing because I could easily look at the same situation with my business. It's like, I'm constantly putting my employees ahead of me. I'm constantly putting their needs ahead of my own. I'm constantly making sure they're taken care of as opposed to just going, you know, I don't feel like paying you this Friday. I'll pay you next Friday. You know, you can't do that, right? There has to be some give and take. Or if I want them to get some work done for me and I know it's gonna overload their, you know, their workload, um, I could selfishly put it on them, but I don't. A lot of times I kind of hold back. I'm like, let me get, let this guy get caught up. You know, then I'll send it to him later in the week, right? So I'm thinking about their needs too. So there has to be some give and take. This is especially true with you guys who are in relationships, right, with your, dating partner, your LTR, or your wife especially, you feel like you're constantly walking on eggshells. Okay, you guys who married those five foot two tyrants who are now talking down to you like a little boy because you didn't have enough game back then to get any better, right? You didn't have any options, so you took the first cute girl that you met in your social circle who was kind of cute, semi-cute, a little pudgy. She was kind of sweet back then, but now you're married, she's turned into this dictator, right? This overlord who's constantly like, ah, da, 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 and you feel like you're constantly walking on eggshells trying to keep her happy, trying to please her. And what have I told you guys? You can't make women happy, so stop trying to do it. The way you make a woman happy is by making yourself happy first. You gotta make yourself happy first. You gotta put your needs ahead of hers. You know, and that's probably the only, or one of the main situations in life where I do want you to put your needs ahead of the other person is when you're in a relationship with a woman right? Especially LTR or marriage. You got to put your needs first. Okay. It doesn't mean to be a selfish bastard, you know, like it's all about me and screw your wants. It's all about me. You know, it doesn't mean that either. It just means that, you know, your happiness should come first. Stop trying to please your woman, you know, stop trying to please your boss even, even if like you're at work and you know, you're overloaded with work and you can't get certain things done without, you know, pushing aside time with your kids. Those are the times that you gotta be like, hey, I gotta put my needs first. And then obviously let your boss know. Because the thing about people or people pleasers is they tend to not want to communicate their needs to others. Okay, especially if it's like a boss or even a dating partner. They don't wanna communicate their needs to others because they don't wanna ruffle any feathers. They don't wanna create uh, friction in the relationship. They don't wanna create conflict. But you know what? That's what life is about. You gotta have some conflict from time to time. And if your needs are not being met, you have to be able to voice that to the other person because you are going to slowly start to go insane in your head and you're slowly going to start to resent not only that other person but yourself for not speaking up, for not telling that person what you're feeling and why you can't do what they're asking you to do. Because at the end of the day, you have to take care of your needs as well. And I cannot stress enough, there needs to be a fine balance with people pleasing. I'm not saying to never please anyone ever, 
because a lot of people take it to the other extreme where they've just become a selfish, narcissistic bastard, you right? And you see a lot of women who are like this, just super narcissistic, super self-absorbed, everything's about them. You know, they're definitely not people pleasing. They think the entire world revolves around them, right? And that is an extreme in the opposite direction. You know, and in a way that's worse than being a people pleaser, you know? So even if you are a people pleaser, people who are like overly narcissistic and think the world revolves around them, they've, they've got it worse because they have no self-awareness whatsoever. At least the good thing I could say about people who are people pleasers are, the reason why you're a people pleaser is because you're empathetic and you can feel what the other person is feeling. So people pleasers tend to be very empathetic, which means that they have a high degree of self-awareness right? You're very self-aware. And these are good things. These are very, very powerful social tools. Okay. These are very, very, you know, powerful social skills. So being a people pleaser is not all bad. It's just that you need to find the balance. Okay. You need to find the balance. Doesn't mean you need to completely never please anyone again, never make anybody happy, but myself, like, no, you just have to find the balance. Okay, like I said, when it comes to your dating partners, especially if you're a man watching this, you know, you got to stop walking around on eggshells in your own home, worrying that your wife's going to yell at you or worrying you're going to disappoint her if you come home late with the, you know, if you go out with the guys this weekend and you come home late. That's what I hate about relationships too. A lot of you people are like, why don't you have a girlfriend? You're dating all these women. And it's like, you duh, you don't think if I had relationships before, you don't think I've lived with women. I've done all that stuff. You know, I don't like reporting to anybody. I don't like reporting to anybody. And right now the women in my life, I don't report to any of them. You know, sometimes they, they even they, they should test me. They're like, you know, it's been like two days. I haven't heard from you and not even a single text have you responded to. And I'm like, I'm busy. I'm busy. What are you doing? Picking up other girls? I'm like, actually I am, you know, I'm doing it for my business. I'm taking students out. So yeah, I'm doing that. Even then it's not like I comply with them, like start like responding to their texts again. I just tell them like, Hey, I'm busy right now. I will respond to you when I can. Okay. I'm not trying to hurt anybody, but also too, I'm not trying to push my own needs aside and especially push my business aside or students aside in order to please you. It's like, Hey, I have a life to run here. And either you're with me and you're behind me 100% or you're against me. What, what is it? Right? So I generally put on the other person. Same thing. Like when I had a boss, I worked in corporate America. He would like shove uh, work in my direction when, when I was already overloaded. And I would just tell him like, I can't get to this right now. His name was Bob. Bob, I can't get to this right now, but I will soon as I can. And don't worry, I'm gonna get this handled for you. Don't worry, I'll take care of it because I know his boss will get on him about me. So I'm like, don't worry, I got your back, I got you covered. And I would take care of it. I'm like, just not right now, right? So when you're a people pleaser, you are constantly worried about what the other person will think about you. It comes from having low self-esteem. Again, this all goes back to the type of upbringing you've had. And most people who are people pleasers have had an upbringing where they had controlling parents, parents who put just a ton of expectation on them, expecting them to be like this or like that, like the ideal child, right? And if you're, you're, you're a parent, man, that's a lot of pressure to put on your kid. Okay. I constantly felt pressured by my parents, right? And they were controlling to an extent, you know, my mother was, she was highly educated. She got her doctorate degree in education. She was a teacher in the SF unified school district for over 30 years. Very, very smart, educated woman and very, very scholastic. And my brothers and sisters all did well in school. That was another thing. They were all getting like A's and B's and I was constantly dragging, dragging my feet. You know, it's not like I couldn't do the work. It's just, I didn't see a point to doing the work. And I saw this early on too. I can remember being in like second grade and even first grade actually and getting homework and going, what's the point of this? Do we get paid to do this? What is this going to do for us? You know, it just, I remember all already questioning like school and not giving my best effort. You know, I just kind of slid by, I just did enough to get by. And my mother and father really didn't like that. My dad would really get angry at me when I bring home my report cards because they were very average. And he's like, why aren't you trying? Why aren't you trying? And it's like, I didn't know how to explain to him that I'm just don't, I'm not motivated. You know, I don't see the point in this. I'm just doing it 
so I could just get to the next grade and the next grade. And I was always like, when will this end? When will this end? All this school, <laughs> you know? And um, he would constantly put like these expectations on me, you know? So my mother, my mom, I felt like I was letting her down because I wasn't doing as well as my brothers and sisters. And here she is, this teacher. And she even told me a few times, she's like, you know, this is embarrassing. You know, you're my son. And, you know, I teach students and, you know, these are your grades. <laughs> and my dad, my dad was a basketball player, right? He was great at sports. And he was, from a young age, he was trying to teach me basketball and get me into it. And that was just never my sport. I just, you know, I'm okay at it. I could do well, but it was just never my sport. And I felt like I was disappointing him there, right? I ended up playing football and track and got into other sports, just not basketball. It wasn't my thing. So I felt like I was letting him down and I really, really tried to please him. And as much as I tried to please him in that sport, I just wasn't, you know, my DNA was, is not set up for that. So growing up, you know, there were a lot of times where I felt I was pushing my own needs aside to try to please my parents. You know, and then when I got older, I had to, I saw myself doing it more with like bosses, uh, girlfriends. I just saw myself constantly trying to please them, right? And this is why a lot of my relationships early on didn't work out because some of my, you know, students have seen like some of my girlfriends back then like, oh, she was gorgeous. Why didn't you marry her or her? And I'm like, you didn't think I wanted to marry that chick? You didn't think I wanted to marry her? I was trying to. I couldn't hang on to them. Right, because I, A, I was still blue pill, but B, I was people pleasing. I was people pleasing in those relationships, which comes off beta, right? Especially with a woman. So I could not hang on to these girls. And that developed from my childhood, just, you know, just the type of upbringing I had. It wasn't that bad, but it was enough to kind of put me in that frame of mind. Like I need to please people. I need to put my, my own needs aside, right? And it wasn't until I got older and, you know, I started running my own businesses. That's when I really matured is when I actually started running my own businesses and I had employees to take care of and they had to take care of their families. Then, you know, I realized it's not all about me, you know, and I have to put their needs first, but at the same time, we need to strike a balance. You know, I need to lead the ship. I just basically needed to become a man as you do, you know, because being a people pleaser is part of just being a little boy. And as I taught in a few of my earlier coaching videos, in order for the man to live inside of you, the boy must die. So you must kill off the boy inside of you in order for the man to live. Okay. And that's how you get rid of a, a lot of this, uh, this people pleasing behaviors that you have, because it's going to be very hard to accomplish big things in life. If you are constantly at the whim of other people's needs, and you're more concerned about keeping them happy than taking care of your own wants and desires, okay? But again, there's a, there's a healthy balance, okay? There is a healthy balance. Good thing is, like I said, you're self-aware, you have great self-awareness, and you're empathetic to other people's emotions. You could feel what they're feeling, which is almost like a superpower, so that's awesome. But you have to have enough confidence in yourself and enough self-esteem, right? Enough belief in yourself to stop putting other people's needs on a pedestal above yours. Stop pedestalizing other people and thinking that, you know, they're better than you. Okay. Even if they are, you could strike a healthy balance. Like, yeah, this person's better, but you know, I can learn from this person. You know, I don't have to hate on them. I could learn from them. Right? So it all comes down to that balance. So I know a lot of books out there on people pleasing will tell you this, is how you completely stop people pleasing. Da -da. And I'm not telling you to do that because I don't think it's healthy to make it all about yourself either. You know, I truly believe you need to strike a balance, you know, and that's what I found has been most successful for me. I've been able to take my business to the next level, my dating life to the next level, my health to the next level, because I'm constantly striking the balance. It's all about balance guys. That's the secret to life is all about balance. That's the secret to happiness. Okay. Cause you're never going to be happy completely being a narcissistic self-centered turd, right? Just as you're never going to be happy being a complete pussified people pleaser. And if you grew up in a home where you did have controlling parents and they were helicopter parents and they put all sorts of crazy expectations on you, right? I see this uh, a lot with students that I've had that are Asian. They come from like traditional Asian families where they expect them to get like perfect grades, right? Straight A's, you better get into the best schools. You better get a professional degree. You know, they prefer you to become a doctor or something, you know, just become wildly successful. All this expectation that gets, gets placed on them. 
you know, and then as a result, they end up pushing aside their own needs just to please their parents, just to please their family, just to please everyone else in their life. When I was working in corporate America, I stayed longer than what I wanted to. Okay, I wanted to quit earlier. You know, part of the reason was financial reasons. I was making good money. I was trying to stack as much cash as possible. But the other reason too was I did not want to let down my parents, right? Because they were so proud of me. They're like, oh, my son, you know, he came from like getting into so much trouble growing up and now he's got this phenomenal job. He got all these responsibilities, working for a corporation that's like, I don't think anybody in my family has ever done that. I mean, I like reached a level of success that nobody in my family did. And then to leave it all, right, to walk away, to start teaching guys pickup is kind of jarring for parents because they don't understand what that is. They don't want to know what that is, right? They, they have no idea like how you're going to make a living doing that. You know, it was a big step for me because I, for a long time, I felt like uh, I lost that that respect from my parents for, you know, for at least a good three or four or five years. You know, just recently now, they're starting to come back around. They're like, wow, he actually has done well for himself. They see that I've replaced my corporate income and then some. They see that I'm much happier. They see that I'm employing people all around the world and that people are depending on me and my business to feed their families, right? They're seeing that, they're witnessing that and they're going, okay, he's, he's actually made this happen, he's done this. So the respect has come full circle. Whereas when I left my corporate job, there was a lull, there was a period in between then and now where you know, I didn't really come around my parents' house. I didn't really show my face that much anymore because I was just like, okay, I need to do what I need to do. I need to prove myself, right? I want to show that you know, what I did was the right decision, right? But either way, I took that step away from pleasing them to, you know, to do what I needed to do. It wasn't even necessarily to please myself so much. It's just something that I needed to do for myself, right? I needed to go on my own path and purpose and not my family's, not my ex bosses or anybody that I worked for before because they were all trying to talk me out of it. They're like, you know, here, yeah, you got a good retirement plan, got a pension, you got a safe company you're working for, you're in management, and then you're, you could rise up to the levels of the, uh, the corporate ladder and this and that. And I mean, it seemed like a good idea to me if I had a family, but I didn't. I'm like, I'm, st I'm free, I'm a free agent. I can go test my value in the market, in the free markets and capitalism. That's what I love about capitalist society. I could test my value in the free markets and see what I'm worth. And I did. And for the first few years, I was like, shit. <laughs> and it crossed my mind to go back. I remember the last interview I had was with Adobe Software um, in Silicon Valley. I went to the interview and I talked with the uh, recruiter and the guy in HR. And um, I remember I walked back to my car knowing that I was running out of money and I was like sat in my Mercedes that I was like on the verge of selling because I didn't have the money to keep this car. I was running out of money because I was starting all these businesses that weren't working. And I remember sitting in my car going, if I take this job, it's going to be another few years before I try this again. I'm like, you know what? I got to burn the boats. I've got to burn the boats. And I told the guy that I'm not going to go to the next interview. I'm going to stick with what I'm doing. And I burned the boats and sure enough, you know, it was rough, but I built a successful business. Took the risk, right? I took that risk and it stems from just letting go of that need to please other people, especially your family, especially your parents, because you'll always feel like this instinctual need to please your parents, especially your dad. If you had your dad in your life, you feel like you're constantly letting him down and you need to impress him, you need to please him. But the way you please your dad and impress your family is by becoming successful, pleasing yourself first, right? So that's all I have to say for today's coaching video. I'm going to wrap up here. Until next time, this is Matt Cross from Alpha Male Secrets. Don't forget to smash that like button below. Also hit that notification bell right next to it so that you are notified whenever I release a brand new coaching video. More importantly guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Too many of you guys are still not yet subscribed to my channel and you're not getting these notifications when I upload brand new videos to YouTube. 
okay? And instead, you end up finding them weeks, months later because you're not subscribed to the channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button now. That way, whenever I upload a brand new video to YouTube, you will be the first to be notified about it. You won't have to wait in line. You won't have to go search for it on YouTube. Instead, you'll get it right as I upload it. You'll get it fresh. And for you guys who want to support my content and all of this red pill knowledge I'm teaching guys even further, the best way to do that is by becoming a premium subscriber of my premium alpha male content channel, which I am hosting on a private platform away from YouTube. Okay, why am I hosting it away from YouTube? I'm hosting it away from YouTube just in the event of one day they try to demonetize all my videos. They try to shut me down completely because they don't like this content I'm teaching. So I'm hosting all of my premium content on a separate private platform away from YouTube. And right now I'm giving away the entire first month of premium content for just one buck. Okay, so it's just one dollar for the entire first month of being a premium subscriber of my brand new premium alpha male content channel, which again, I'm hosting off of YouTube. Okay, and to get signed up, it's real simple. All you need to do is click that link below in my description box. It will take you over to my website where you could get signed up right now. It just takes two seconds. So do that now, and I will see you in my next coaching video.